It's a chief concern that comes with aging, memory loss. Today, two experts with our Peter O'Donnell Jr. Brain Institute are here to explain advancements in understanding, diagnosing, and treating Alzheimer's disease. Doctors Mark Diamond and Lorena Salisis, thank you for joining us. Dr. Diamond, what is Alzheimer's disease and how does it differ from dementia? Dementia is a, a large umbrella term that encompasses a lot of different disorders that cause progressive cognitive disturbance. Alzheimer's disease is the most common subtype of dementia, and it's caused by accumulation of two proteins in the brain. One is called amyloid beta, and the other is called tau. And amyloid beta forms what we know as plaques, and tau forms tangles in the brain. Uh, plaques are outside of neurons, and tangles are inside of neurons. Gotcha, Salisis. You were awarded a new innovator award from the National Institutes of Health for protein study. Um, tell us how your work relates to the study of Alzheimer's. Our lab uh, aims to understand how the buildup of these assemblies actually forms in the first place. We aim to um, get atomic information of these early assemblies of fiber formation to uh, design specific molecules that bind to them for detection or for uh, treatment to stop formation of these fibrils in these different organs. Dr. Diamond, how common is Alzheimer's disease and, and how is it typically diagnosed? Alzheimer's is typically diagnosed in older people uh, when they uh, present with cognitive disturbance. Typically that is memory, but it doesn't have to be. It could be changes in personality or language. And the diagnosis uh, is now can be made very accurately using uh, what we call biomarkers. Those would include blood tests, spinal fluid tests, and imaging uh, to reveal the accumulation of pathological proteins in the brain. Alzheimer's is actually very, very common. If you survey pathology of patients who die over the age of roughly 85, the incidence of Alzheimer's pathology in those patients is somewhere around 40 to 50%. So uh, it's quite common in older people. The degree to which the pathology causes symptoms is, um, is variable. It, it, there's a lot of other factors. Um, but the, the fundamental pathology is actually quite common in older people. Dr. Diamond, you direct our Center for Alzheimer's and Neuroge Neurodegenerative Diseases here at UT Southwestern. Tell us what problems, what questions your lab is working to answer. The center itself is a, kind of a, 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 an intentional environment, if you will, where we've recruited scientists like Dr. Silesis and, and others to work on what we think of as the fundamental problem, which is a protein accumulation. A lot of the diseases that we're interested in include Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALS. And in this case, the, the accumulations are happening inside the central nervous system or the brain. And by recruiting people who have very, very different skills in science, we can create a multidisciplinary team that has synergistic impact on our discovery of new diagnostics and new therapies, which is the primary goal of our center. Dr. Salisas, tell us about the questions that your lab is trying to answer and how you anticipate the answers to those questions being translated to improvements in patient care. In my lab, what we are aiming to do is to determine the structure, the molecular structure of these fibrils or these shapes to understand how they form. And we care about the early uh, steps of the mechanism of fiber formation and as well as uh, late states of it. And what we uh, do after that, what we try to do after that is to use this information to design molecules that are going to bind to them. And these molecules can do two things. We can design them to be uh, a detection tool for diagnostic purposes or to stop polymerization or further formation of these assemblies. Dr. Diamond, how are people diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease? And if you know someone who's showing signs of, of Alzheimer's disease, what should they do? What type of doctor should they see and what type of test should they have? The state of the art right now for diagnosis involves a blood test, a spinal fluid test, and uh, brain imaging. 
once people show cognitive impairment, that means the disease has already progressed considerably. It's sort of like with metastatic cancer versus finding cancer localized. Um, so our goal is to have biochemical tests that we could run preferably on blood, if not blood, then spinal fluid, that would pick up the earliest molecular events, the kinds of changes, shape shifts in proteins that uh, Dr. Salises and I are speaking of. The other really common cause of dementia globally is simply vascular disease. And obviously, uh, uh, we've learned a lot from cardiology about how to reduce vascular risk factors. And reduction of those risk factors applies to people uh, who might have a contribution of vascular disease to their cognitive impairment. So even if you have Alzheimer's, if you have vascular disease on top, that's going to make it more progress more quickly. Um, so we'd like, that's why an MRI is very important in the um, evaluation of someone with cognitive impairment, because it can reveal vascular changes in the brain. Dr. Salesis, will understanding these proteins and how they're assembled help us reverse diseases like Alzheimer's? We're not there yet, but I think there's a, there's a, a lot of time and effort put into that particular topic, because the idea is that once we understand how they form and how, can, how we detect them, we could also uh, design antibodies or small molecules that can bind to them and make your brain clear them slowly. Dr. Diamond, a hard question for you. Uh, so uh, do you think we'll have a treatment for Alzheimer's or a cure or both? I don't typically think about a cure in the sense of utterly eliminating the disease process. Just as we don't have a cure for high blood pressure, or diet type two diabetes or type one diabetes, for example. Um, however, just as we can control those processes and essentially eliminate them as causes of disease and disability uh, in an appropriately treated patient, I think we can do that for Alzheimer's. That is to say, I think we can make interventions that will slow the process or halt the process of progression. Well, I want to thank you both for joining us today and uh, for teaching us about the, uh, the causes of diseases like Alzheimer's and neurodegenerative diseases and for all the great uh, promise that you've told us uh, the future holds for the study of these diseases. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks for joining us. Until next episode, stay safe and stay healthy.